To sit on rocks, to muse over flood and fell, to slowly trace the forest's shady scene, where things that own, not man's dominion dwell, and mortal foot hath never rarely been, to climb the trackless mountain all unseen, with the wild flock that never needs a fold, alone over steep and foaming falls to lean. This is not solitude. Tis but to hold converse with nature's charms and view her stores unrolled. This beautiful poem by Byron, inspired by nature, landscapes, traditions and legends, invites us to sense the intimacy of mountains and their forests, to explore their valuable treasures and discover their secrets. The Serrania de Cuenca is a privileged place for just such an experience, which will be more than perfect if we add a pinch of adventure through a walk through the so-called Cathedrals of Unia. We are in the heart of the Serrania de Cuenca, only a few kilometers away from the city of Cuenca, in an area in which the Mediterranean forest, water and rock, have joined again to reinforce their connection with the path of life. Cathedrals of Unia are a formation of impressive rocky walls made of calcareous dollar stones, which are a little peculiar because of the narrow passageways allowing the ascent to the summit of the Muela de la Madera from the basis of the river's canyon, excavated by the crystalline waters of the Arroyo de la Madera. Hiking up to the top, the artistic flight of rock martins and the distant chirping of a peregrine falcon welcomes us into their holy temple. Halfway towards the summit, we find ourselves already at the door of the cathedrals. We are surprised by a wonderful cast shelter and a travertine column, which is the result of the patient deposition of calcium carbonate that has been extracted from the insides of the parent rock by the erosive work of water that rises up from the small rifts and hollows of the rocky wall. Here we find the ruins of what in the past was a shelter for sheep. In the surrounding area, Marked by the humidity of the Dolomitic rock, small clumps of repiculous grasses decorate the monotonous grey of the rock. Some of these little plants have developed the ability to deceive small insects, trapping them with their adhesive skin to their leaves to feed on them. The vigorous ivy which covers the façade of the holy temple creating a vertical garden is a clear sign that we are about to enter in a micro-habitat, more likely to occur in humid areas. We enter this overbearing calcareous cathedral whose entrance is safeguarded by hollies and hazels and protected by a dense barrier of thorny shrubs. It is breathtaking to contemplate these walls and their internal galleries full of clefts, knowing they were formed gradually millions of years ago due to endocast processes, 
being a result of the connection between the absorption spots on the surface runoff at the top and the water spouts at the basis of the rocky wall. In the cathedrals of Unia, we witness a beautiful mountainous corner, almost subterranean, in which the prevailing microclimate has changed to foster a rupiculous ecosystem dominated by mosses and lichens and a great diversity of ferns. The path leads us to the top, where surrounded by an enchanted city, we can contemplate the vast canyon of the Arroyo de la Madera, which downstream is embraced by the River Júcar. At the summit, we return to the Mediterranean forest and are immersed in the vegetation of large flat-topped hills bordered by rocky escarpments. Here it is not difficult to find traces of the presence of some of the dwellers of this part of the forest. This is a scat of stone marten, characterised by its loop shape. Here we see footprints of a European wildcat left in the damp mud of a drying puddle. And this used to be the pantry of a red squirrel, which in this case has led to the planting of a Lusitanian oak. This is strong evidence of the eminent role such a small mammal plays, designing, like a grand architect, the vegetation of the ecosystems in which it dwells. Here, at the top of what is known as the Muela de la Madera, the European black pine forest, which dominates the tree layer, is combined with a shrub layer, mainly made up of thorny species, creating a completely different landscape, shaped by the cold and wind that batters the borders of the rocky cliff from the previous one. In the path ahead, we are lucky to enjoy the company of the griffon vultures, nesting in one of the most important nesting areas in Castilla-La Mancha, as well as the accidental sighting of the swift Iberian ibex, which has converted the rocky walls of the Serrania de Cuenca into its particular playground. Gradually, we are awestruck by the panoramic view offered by the top of the rocky escarpments of the Muela de la Madera, which surround the village of Unia and its lagoon. This area of the Serrania de Cuenca maintained a very close connection with human beings, since the abundance and high quality of its wood turned it into an old meeting point of logging routes. By installing a transport cableway between the top of the rocky walls and their basis at the beginning of the 20th century, which was an authentic technological miracle at that time, the tree trunks extracted from the forest were transported down undamaged, avoiding the deterioration they suffered until then from having to be thrown from the top. At that time, the construction of the dam of the Laguna de Unia and the channel connecting it with the river Júcar, 15 kilometers downstream, where its middle course starts, was finalized. The best way for the trunks to reach Cuenca, where the sawmills were located, 
was floating down rivers. The dam allowed the filling of the Laguna de Unia with tree trunks for their relatively easy and fast transport through the channel, overcoming a high stretch of the canyon of the river Jucar that, owing to its sharp morphology, complicated and increased the cost of the transport of wood along the river. After looking out from the great height of the rocky walls surrounding Unia, the descent towards the village requires taking an old path which connects the mountainous villages and the vast forests used for hunting and gathering once walked by their inhabitants. On this occasion another stone city or enchanted city leads us into a narrow gorge surrounded by rocky walls where the conditions of the microclimate have created a small jungle of ferns and boxwood. The fascination you feel when absorbing the beautiful open landscape that lies before us when exiting the narrow cast gallery is impossible to describe. Here we are witnesses once again of the unforgiving force of the cast modelling. Since the path we walk is the result of the differential dissolution process of the calcareous substrate, carried out by water and wind over millions of years. Once in Unia, we cannot finish our visit without contemplating the wonders of wildlife in its lagoon, declared wildlife reserve owing to its abundant biodiversity, characterized by the presence of a number of aquatic life forms. This corner of the natural park of the Serrania de Cuenca, with its cathedrals, the Arroyo de la Madera, the Muela de la Madera, and the Laguna de Unia challenges our senses and our capacity to wonder as we are surrounded by breathtaking natural wonders during a seemingly never-ending hike. As Thoreau said, do not stop walking through fields and forests, along streams and rivers, crossing rocks and prairies, and through valleys and mountains and entrust your reflections to those who inhabit them.